Sri Lanka is aging at an alarming rate. If we are not prepared, the rising costs of pensions and healthcare will soon place the government under severe pressure. If we are not prepared, economic and social forces will lead to greater poverty and alienation among the elderly, who will find their experience and productivity wasting away. In 2001, about 9% of the Sri Lankan population was elderly. That means 60 years and above. Year 2021, that proportion is going to be 18%. That means within 20 year period, we are expecting the doubling of elderly population. Our population aging is taking place in an era our economic growth is not very satisfactory. Therefore, we need to look at productive aging. In terms of productive aging, elderly should be able to participate in economic activities. Already, the traditional family unit is under strain. But this too may soon weaken to the point where younger people no longer consider it a duty and a privilege to take care of the elder members of their family. If we are not prepared, and if we do not act now to find new ways of working and caring for the elderly, never again will we see our society shaped as it was in the past. No one will remain untouched. We all have parents, uncles, aunts, elderly neighbours, and we've all seen old people condemned by loneliness to be outcasts. Beggars, when they could be better. Aging is a relentless process that spares no one, but societies can make sure that both the elderly and the young do not suffer through lack of planning. In South Asia, Sri Lanka has one of the most comprehensive social security systems. But it has a lot of room for improvement, both in terms of coverage and benefit levels. Only about one third of those who are active in the labor force participate in pension schemes. And only one fifth of the older population receive pensions. I don't have a stable income. I earn something for my daily needs. I fear my future when I am old. Even living is a risk. Today, 80% of the elderly live with their children and rely on them for financial and in-kind support. But although caring for our elders is an enshrined value in Sri Lankan culture, Modernization is paving the path for an altogether different reality. Caregivers, primarily women who are also working mothers, have less time and money for those who have retired, suffer ill health, are widowed, or whose children are abroad. Within our family, our children look to the grandparents for affection and care. This is a two-way process. The elderly looking after the young, and the young finding time to look after the elderly. This, however, is changing in the modern family, because in a competitive and a progressive society, the demands that are made on this family doesn't allow them the time to look after the elderly. Old people who can care for themselves value their independence. However, because of the lack of income support, they have to become dependent on their children. My pension is spent on the needs of the house, no savings left. Moreover, pension is not sufficient for my needs. An adequate pension is useful. In the next 20 years, more of the elderly will be women, alone, without income. Unwanted, they will become a strain on the healthcare system since an overall strategy of formal community based social care services, which support individuals in their own families and communities, do not yet exist in Sri Lanka. So, given the challenges of aging, the health system still has to develop an overall strategy to deal with the problems that aging will cause. Although we're fortunate in this country in having an extensive healthcare system, one of the major gaps in the healthcare system today 
is that we don't have the services to deal with the emerging problems of chronic um, and elderly uh, illnesses. Although people are worried about the impact of aging on future healthcare costs, our results suggest that in fact aging will only add about 1% to GDP to current healthcare spending. The biggest increases in spending in fact are actually going to be driven by changes in health awareness and increasing demand for services from the population. By adopting the right policy measures now, before it's too late, we can recognize the elderly as a valuable human resource who can boost labor productivity and participate in the labor force. We can ensure they live with dignity. A study by the World Bank reveals that Sri Lanka's aging population need not be an aging problem if our decision makers decide to do something now. Social welfare and care services uh, um, should be increased for the most vulnerable. Uh, those should include uh, home-based um, services for the elderly um, and activities that will provide the elderly with the opportunity to provide services in their whole, own environment uh, as well as provide services for the country's development. Sri Lanka's labor force growth rate has already slowed down. By 2030, it is estimated to contract. This could have adverse effects on the economy. So to counter those, we need to encourage labor force participation. The labor market should allow a lot of part-time work because females and older workers, they are not likely to work eight to five. And also the training in the labor market should improve and it, the training opportunities should be available for both the young as well as the old. And the companies should be encouraged to hire older workers to improve the participation among those uh, groups of the population. Also vital as the number of old people who live alone increases in Sri Lanka in future years is the need for the country to establish and increase the capacity for nursing homes to look after these people as they age. And also we shouldn't forget that there will be people living in the community at advanced ages by themselves and we will need of course to put in policies and appropriate services to help these people care for themselves. Measures to empower the elderly should begin during their working life. Workers in the public, private and informal sector should make their contributions to schemes that should support them when they can earn no longer. If we act now, we can prevent the negative impact of aging on our country's growth. If we act now, we can eliminate the emerging strains on traditional support systems and avoid greater poverty and hardship among the old. If we act now, we can recognize and sustain our forgotten human resource. If we act now.